if it is divide, that will be quotient of two squares. Now, why do we call it difference of two squares? It's because there is a square of its own, a square of its own, with a difference between them. Good. The difference between your age and my age is a subtraction, not addition. So when you see this in mass, you add them in one chamber, you subtract them in the other. Look at this well. There's nothing here. Add them in one, subtract them in one. That's if you see this. Now these are perfect squares. Now look at this. A squared, no A minus B all squared. Good. This means just double up. You should have double up. What if somebody is tempted to do this? You share the powers for them this way. This is wrong. You can only share the powers for them when you say this in indices. You see, that you have a squared, b squared. But once there's an operation sign here, you have to go the perfect square expansion method by doubling up. You can do this. You can do this, but not this. So take note. When is this? You can do this. The suppression sign here, you can do this. So please, don't mess them up. That is why I wrote the perfect squares below. Good. So this one also means double up. Now let's go to our question here. 4x squared minus y squared. Good. Now some of them happens to be difference of two squares in this guys. It happens. So this 4 is 2 squared. Do you agree? That will give me 4. Now that is my x squared. And this happens to be y, so all y, 1y. Right? There's one here, 1y. One it's the same as the coefficient here, the hidden coefficient is 1. So 1y, one that's the same as y squared, as you see. So when I put this together in the name of indices, I get this. So 2 squared will give me 4, x squared will give me x. Good. And then it's y squared. Now, is this difference of 2 squares? Yes, with certainty. So I add them in one chamber, subtract them in the other. Case close. That's all. Now let's try the next one too. 81a squared minus y squared. This is 9 squared. That will produce 81. a squared is still a squared. And then it's y squared. Now, one may ask, sir, you break the number here, you have 9 squared, but you never break the number on the right. I did. You see, because it is 1, you can't really tell when I've done something. But I've done something here. If it was to be 4, I'll have written 2 here. So I did something. Good. So this is 9a all squared. You see, I group them to 1. It is 110, as you can see. Now, what do we do to this? Is it difference of two squares? Yes. So that is 9a plus y. We have 9a minus y. So welcome to difference of two squares. Okay. Now let's apply. So we have two sample questions here. Private and school. Good. Let's go let's to the first one. 25a squared minus 4. Now this does not really look like a difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares in disguise. We have to open up here. So let's check. 5 squared will still give me 25. a squared remains so. Now that is 2 squared. It is now becoming visible. Good. So you can have difference of two squares in disguise, as you can see. Good. Now this is difference of two squares. You see, I really did something on the right. You can now see because it's not 1. So this is 5a plus 2. We have 5a minus what? 2. That is all. Now, the next one. That is 9f square y minus 25yz squared. So, somebody will just do this. It seems correct, but it is not. Why do we say it is not? Look at it well, once again. Yes, 3 square will give me 9, x square will give me x square. This y was not squared. So how come the y has obtained a square here? It is not correct in mathematics. So it is just close to the truth, but it is not. So I can have 3 squared here. So let me use, let's use this approach. Now I think this y is causing a problem here, right? So no wonder they said factorize. So did we really factorize here? Yes, we did. Just that they were perfect square numbers. 
So we didn't have to go through the struggle of putting something outside. Yes, they were. Now, the same factorize, I can just go through the same method this way. Good, so you just factor the y out, as you can see, y here, y here, that's it. Now, there's y into this, that is what we mean. You have 9s squared, as you can see. Now, y into that, you have 25z squared. I think what you have in the chamber here is difference of two squares, yes. So, not all questions will follow this pattern, unless they are perfect square numbers. Now, this one's, the y is not a perfect square number, that is why it is causing a bit. So, we took it out in the name of factorization. Good. So, y into this, we have that, and that we have this, right? So, this is now this. Good. 3 squared will give you 9, s squared that. And this also give me this. How do we expand this? Keep the y outside still. You have 3x plus 5z. You have 3x minus 5 or z. That is all. When you expand this, you'll get a question back again. Okay. So let's look at an application with difference of two squares. So we have 3 kilo plus 13 squared equals 16 squared. So, if I have to point 13 square and 16 square, that would be too huge, right? So, we can rearrange. Then we try to turn this complex thing to a very simple thing. Now, that is a square, that is a square. This is difference of two squares. So, I have 16 plus 13. You see, it's very easy to quantify this 16 minus 13 in another. So, I have 3 kill equals 29 times 3. So, this will give me 3 kill equals 87. So, if I want 3, I have to divide through by 3. That's I want kill. Divide through by 3, and I'll get here 29. So, that is an application. You see, had it not been difference of two squares, you go trying to look for 13 square. That is very big. 16 square is very disturbing. But you see, by the invention of difference of two squares, we are able to simplify this very easily. So when I say without using calculators, you can still punch. Because if you don't know 87 over 3, you can still punch against 29. But they want to tell you to solve it in this way, using difference of two squares, right? Because with calculator, I'll just use 13 square here, straight away, 1, 6, 9, and use 16 square. Yeah, good. Okay, so that is also another question. So I have s plus 6 all squared minus 36 x squared. Now, there is also a difference of two squares. I consider the whole of this as one, and there is also one. So I have s plus 6 all squared. If you are not so smart, you have to go and double this one up <coughs> in the name of perfect square expansion. Then you have to expand. That be very tidy. So you have 6 x squared like this. Good. This is difference of two squares, right? So difference of two squares makes complicated things very easy. Now look at it. S plus X plus the whole of this. Again, there's nothing here. Take note. S plus X, which is this, minus the whole of this. So I can join them together. I'll get 7X plus 6 here. This and this will also give me negative 5X plus 6. So that is how difference of two squares can make a very complex work very easy. So that is it. Factorize completely. Good. Now this thing looks like a quadratic in three times. Something like this. So you see, three times. What we have to do is that we have to make assumption based on this middle one. We'll get four times, then we can group. I hope you remember from quadratic. Good. So what you have on the board also looks like a three term expression, as you can see. So what do we do? m square n minus 2m n square plus n cube. Now what do I see here? Good. So maybe I can make an assumption like uh, say minus 1m n minus 1m n. This will produce minus 2m n. It's as if the assumption is working. It's not true. This is n square. There is no way you can make any assumption to get this m squared. It's not going to work. 
Okay, how you wish this end is not squared. So you just be free and just keep in this and expand and get to a full time expression. Now uh, that is a way out.